seven and five, a tough start, and then finished the year in impossibly good fashion. What was it that ultimately clicked with the team to uh, to uh, to allow the team to win the national championship? <laughs> Is that a question for me? Kilo. <laughs> well, we had experienced a lot of things. First of all, being rated number one in the country and then uh, having a lot of expectations and then recognizing that uh, it, you know, there was a cost for not living up to those expectations and some of, those, some, some of the, that experience uh, wasn't, you know, a lot of it was, you know, uh, intellectual, some of it was uh, emotional, but some of it was physical too. So we had to take a lot out of each other to make each other strong and, and tough. But, you know, it was, uh, it was one of those things that allowed us to uh, recognize that it was our team. And so once we got the understanding and the feel that it is our team, then we felt that we could, we could, as a team, you know, do what we did. And that was when the championship. Chuck, looking at the lineup, all five starters at some point in time in their college career were all Americans. Four players from that team alone were drafted in the subsequent draft. What was practice and scrimmages like with that much talent on the floor? We took them, Chuck. Tell them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to run a different offense than they did, so uh, ours was a little bit more freelance, but. Uh, what was it like? Well, pretty much Tony or I had to guard Isaiah. That was basically impossible. Um, beyond that, uh, we took it upon ourselves. Uh, it, once the roles were all established and everything, it was really a treat to play against them uh, because we took it upon ourselves, you know, to every day make them better, uh, every day work as hard as we could. Uh, practice time was our game time. You know, we knew if we played as hard as we could, uh, we were only helping them get better. And I, I, I'd just like to add one little comical thing to that. We just wanted to get them kicked out of practice. <laughs> and we did. And every day, if we got them kicked out of practice, practice was short, and we can go and do what we need to do. And that is as true as it will get. You can ask any, any one of them. Landon, Ray was named Big Ten Player of the Year. He was the Big Ten MVP, and he had a dominant run in the NCAA tournament. What was it like to play with him? Hey, um, he was, when I was first, when Knight first uh, recruited me to IU and then I accepted, there was only one player to, to write me a letter and say, you know, congratulations. Uh, for coming, you know, I'm glad that you're coming. And I remember he signed the letter, the other big man. <laughs> and I never knew that that letter right there it would be a lifelong friendship. Uh, playing next next to this guy was just awesome because, I, especially my freshman year, I remember Joe Barry Carroll would shoot over me, and uh, you know I would be in place, but but he would come out of nowhere and just throw Joe Barry Carroll stuff out of the gym, which I love because I hate Purdue. <laughs> but uh, playing with this guy, he was a friend, and there was there was several times where I contemplated on quitting the team, you know, because I was trying to deal with Knight, and it was pretty rough, and Ray was uh, the, the person that I would go and confide in, and he, you know, convinced me to, to stay because I definitely thought about leaving. And, uh, and he's just been a lifelong friend, and he was a great player to play next to. Randy, uh, Landon Turner, second half of the season, in through the tournament, what did he mean to this team? I was, t I was talking to Landon uh, earlier this afternoon, and, and he was really, uh, back in the 80s, uh, he could play the four position that a lot of players play the way they do now. He was a guy that could go out and defend out on the floor uh, at that position. Uh, which allowed us, when, when, in all honesty, I mean, we won the national championship because of how Landon came along. Uh, truly believe that. Uh, I, I don't think we would have been capable of winning without what he did midway through the Big Ten season that year in turning his play around, which gave us, we were so versatile with 
being able to play he and Ray together, uh, as well as then going to someone like Ted, who was more of an outside shooter. Uh, but but Landon at that point in time, which force power force back in the 80s couldn't do that. They couldn't go out on the floor and defend. He was able to do that. Uh, for us, and, and it propelled us to where we are today. I didn't write him a letter, all right, when he signed here, because the son of a bitch knocked me out of the high school tournament. <laughs> so I was hoping that son of a bitch would go somewhere else. <laughs> I'm sorry, Randy. <laughs> Glenn, Isaiah Thomas, one of the greatest basketball players of all time, one of the greatest college basketball players of all time. What was he like as a performer that 1980-81 season? Well, obviously he was an incredible talent and, and the leader of our team on and off the court. And, and I think that's the thing that's often overlooked about Isaiah's role in, in trying to get the team together when we were struggling. And I think he was showed his great leadership skills not only here at Indiana, but also when he went to the Pistons. Um, you know, he was always talking to players, encouraging players. Uh, you know, he had his own struggles uh, trying to get the team right, but uh, he was always uh, a, a very supportive teammate, and uh, it was great to, to just be around him and, and learn from him. Isaiah, uh, the IU experience, coming here, playing two years, winning a national championship, how did it prepare you for all that you were able to accomplish at the professional level later on? Uh, it, it was my, my rock, my uh, foundation in terms of uh, playing here and um, the long-lasting friendships that I've made here and just, <clears throat> you know, with, with my teammates and, you know, I was just thinking and, and, and talking to everyone about, uh, you know, some of the places that you've gone, things that we've experienced over the years and I can honestly say Every decision that I've made uh, prior to leaving Indiana, uh, I've always reached out and consulted with one of these guys on the dais with us um, to, to get their input, to get their feedback, to see if I was doing the right thing. I don't, I don't think I've ever made a decision whether it was to, to get married, uh, to you know, take the next job, or or uh, you know, go into the WNBA, or you know, hire a coach, or you know, Glenn and I have uh, worked together. You know, the first job I got uh, with the Toronto Raptors. I, I every job that I've had, um, you know, in professional sports, I've always had someone from uh, this team, uh, you know, working with or consulting with. So uh, that's how important the relationships have been for me and to me, and this is my family. Why don't you get another job? I need one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I, a couple more people got to get fired. <laughs> Phil, tonight uh, Indiana's got the North Carolina Tar Heels, the team you played to win the national championship. Um, Indiana won NCAA tournament games that year by 23 points, which was a record for a long, long time. How confident is was this group not, collectively heading into that game? It's still a record, right? It's still a record. So we like the Miami Dolphins, and it's like Mercury Moore or something. You know, it's like we, we still got the record. We still got the record. Well, let me answer that, but before I do, I just I, I wanted to tell everybody up here and, and everybody out there that. Uh, I, I talked with Coach Knight yesterday for quite a while, and, and we had a long conversation. But um, as you might imagine, uh, when you have a conversation with Coach Knight, you do a lot of listening and not a lot of talking. Uh, but what he said and what he wanted me to convey to everybody up here was that, and these were his exact words, he could not have been more thankful or grateful for the opportunity to coach this group uh, at Indiana University. Um, and the last thing he said was he was most proud of this group, not because of the games that they won, but how they won them. And playing as hard as we did, um, and, and that was a credit to everybody up here besides myself. Um, but he wanted to convey that. To answer your question, um, maybe with a, a story I can remember, uh, a timeout against Maryland in the first game of the uh, NCAA. I think we played in Dayton, and I think we were down eight to zero. 
and uh, called a timeout and uh, I can still hear in some form or fashion Coach Knight saying to Isaiah and everybody that they think that they can run on us. Um, and he asked Isaiah if he'd like to show him how to run. And uh, he responded, and I, I think at that point going forward, um, it was a fait accompli for anybody that we played. Ted, you had a spectacular career here at Indiana. Um, what was it like in the early stages of your career to learn from these players and to become the leader that you became in, in subsequent years here at IU? Um, it wasn't always easy. I mean, when you come in as a freshman, uh, you're playing against, uh, you know, the game gets it's a lot quicker than you're used to. Uh, you know, you think you got an open jump shot and Ray comes out of nowhere and slaps it into about the third row and Knight jumps your ass about not shot faking. And <laughs> so uh, it's not always that easy. And uh, I, I thought there was some other things, you know, Coach Knight was always known as a, uh, a great X's and O's coach. And, uh, but more importantly, you know, after we came home from Hawaii, we had, we had practices, two-day practices for about the next five days that were nothing about X's and O's or anything else, but just becoming tough. And becoming a tougher team and learning how to win. And we probably learned more about toughness and uh, how to win in those next five days. And it made a, a huge difference as we went forward. So uh, there was a big learning curve coming here. I mean, obviously getting to play with uh, these type of players was fantastic. Uh, getting to play for a great coach, but uh, it wasn't always so easy. It, uh, there was a lot, of, uh, a lot of hard work put into it. You know, when you, when you talk about leading and, you know, those tough five days, um, I remember coming out, our first game was against Illinois, uh, start of the Big Ten season. And uh, we were all scared to death, uh, petrified. Uh, and I don't know if um, any one of us was uh, willing to take a shot <laughs> because we were all afraid to shoot. And uh, Kitchu was the one that, that, that led us. And uh, I, I believe that game, he, he scored 40 points. And that was the game that really got us started. And, you know, he gave us the confidence to really go out and, and keep competing and keep getting better. And, you know, I remember France that, that week in, in, in practice also um, because I, I went home and every, every part of my body was scratched up from, from he and Tony. And I mean, like big whelps, right? And, and I remember Chuck was guarding me at one point in time and I looked down you know, and he and his face was all red and he was sweating. And the only thing I could think, and I, and I don't know why I remember this, but Tony, do you remember when we, when we first got down here and we was talking about Chuck? Because Chuck was like the leading scorer of like the world at that time. And we were like, man, I don't know if we're going to get any time because, <laughs> because this dude can play and he can shoot. But, you know, though, you know, Chuck and Ted, I, I think, in, during that period of time, they gave us the confidence and the inspiration to, to move on to the next game. And had they not practiced as hard and Ted not played so well, uh, we, we never would have got out of the, the hole of funk that we was in. Steve, some thoughts about Randy Whitman as a player, a person who had a great career at IU and a terrific career in the NBA as well. You know, Randy was like a rock. Um, you could always just count on Randy to do whatever he needed to do with a steady heart, a steady pace. Um, never got rattled. Um, you know, I remember the most thing I remember is obviously the championship game. We're battling in the first half, and Randy kneels that jumper at the end of the first half and puts us up, I think, for the first time. And it, it's just, it, we were shocked and we were good. We were happy. We, we just expected Randy to do that for us. There was never a flaw in his game, and he wasn't as flamboyant as some of the other guys on the team, but there was never a flaw either. And he was never a guy that made big mistakes that put us in a position that we had to dig out of. And many times he dug us out of those mistakes just with steady play. So there was a quiet leadership. Isaiah obviously was our, you know, our, our vocal leader and everything, but Randy was the quiet leader on that basketball team that 
Yeah, and, and what a great combination of a backcourt of, of Whitman and Isaiah Thomas at that point in time. I don't know, looking back now, there was a better combination of a backcourt in the country. Um, and obviously, like those two taking us to the championship game, yeah, we had frontline strength, but you know, these guys just made plays and, and controlled the pace of the game. And you know, Randy was incredibly coachable by by night, on the, on the, and he had the ability to transfer that to the players. Instantly, I mean, he would pull Randy over, and, and then Randy would call us in, and he would put it in a different verbiage than night was. Thank God. But um, the message got clear, and, and we all felt we knew what we had to do at that point. And Randy lined it out specifically for us. So I mean, it was a glue. He was the glue of our basketball team. Eric, it's been 35 years. Um, and you can tell that there's just an enormous camaraderie amongst this group. How great is it to be back together with this team? Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, you think about this experience overall, and it's a game, and you're a young person. And you look back now with that kind of perspective, and you just you think about that this really means something. At the time, it meant everything. And when this group came together, you look at some of the challenges and the ups and downs during the season. Um, you look at what it represented in people's lives. But this group was disciplined, overcame a lot of challenges and adversity. I don't want to overstate that, but you know, through the ups and downs, and created a bond and, and energy amongst the group that I think carries through to this day. Some of us have stayed closer on a more regular basis than others, but when you come back into an atmosphere like this, uh, it's just like it was yesterday. So it's been a fantastic experience for me and um, really appreciate it. Bob, put this team in historical context uh, of the great IU basketball teams. This is right up there with the dominant performance in the NCAA tournament and the level of talent that they had. Well, you know, uh, after the 75th uh, NCAA tournament, they named the uh, 76 IU team the all-time best champion. Of all the teams that I've seen come along before and since, uh, the one that matched up the best, the champion that matched up the best with that 76 team was this team. And it, it's not all that preposterous because the same guy put both of them together, but but you uh, match up the uh, the May and Benson front line with uh, Landon and Ray. You match up the uh, Wilkerson-Buckner backcourt combination with with Randy and Isaiah and uh, Ted Kitchell and uh, and and uh, Jimmy Thomas uh, are, are a very good matchup for uh, uh, Tommy Abernathy and uh, Wayne Radford or, or the people that came along as, as reserves there. And so that would have been a great game in, in April. In January, it wouldn't have been all that good a game. <laughs> but, uh, but this team really, really did come on and it's been uh, kind of belabored how the, the jelling point clearly was when uh, when Landon became a, uh, a great force up front, and uh, uh, that was quite a basketball team. That game they played at Maryland, uh, against Maryland at Dayton, uh, was uh, one of the all-timers. On behalf of all IU fans, welcome back to the 1981 National Champions. Big round of applause for one of the greatest teams of all time. Since nobody didn't ask me a question, that's all right. I want to thank all of you for coming out and supporting us. Um, it's been a pleasure to see these guys again, and this will be a day that I will never forget. And I want to thank all these guys up here and thank all our fans and thank Indiana University, Indiana University for giving us an opportunity to be successful as we are. And without Coach Knight, without these guys, of us working together, and by the grace of God, I'm, I'm just very thankful to be here. And I thank these guys for being here, and uh, God bless everybody. Good thank job, you. Ray. So we're in Hawaii. Wait, we're in Hawaii and we're playing clips. Thank you for coming out. No, no, no but, and, and we're getting the scout report on this guy named Tree Rollins and Larry Nance that I had never heard of, right? It's like, and, and you know, the scout report says they're athletic and everything else. And I had never seen two 
big guys more athletic than Ray and Landon. So I'm, I'm sitting there like, yeah, they're athletic. And, you know, coach is just telling us they're athletic. So all of a sudden, you know, Ray goes to the hole. He gets his shot blocked. And I'm thinking that, okay, I haven't seen that before, like never. And, you know, I don't see Ray getting like frustrated, right? You know, he kind of like, okay, we'll try it again. Then I throw it to Landon, you know, he gets his shot blocked. And Landon, you know, all right. And then I give it back to Ray. And this is the first time I saw Ray go to the hole. No, you double pumped. <laughs> and tried to scoop it, and Tree and Larry Nance were still up in the air. Now, at that time, we didn't know who Tree Rollins was, who Larry Nance was, but, you know, come to find out, we, we learned and we lost the game, but that was the first time, and I think the only time, I've ever seen Ray a little frustrated by somebody's athleticism. So, I thought that was funny, but anyway. I got him back, I got him back in the pros, I got him back. <laughs> I like to just say one thing about this the team. There are names of of individuals up here that are recognized as a result of playing in the NBA, being drafted, and the levels in which they're drafted. But then there are names here: uh, Kirshner, Eisenberger, who else? Grunwald, France. Uh, Franz, Risley, and Brown. I was drafted. No, no, okay, you're drafted. That's not the Dilroy. point. <laughs> Dil Dilroy. The point I'm trying to make is, is this. There were two championships. There was one national championship, and then there was one who was the best team that we played. The white team. Hey, and it was the white team. That was the names in which I had just mentioned. Who was the toughest team that we played this season? The white team. The team of the names of individuals who were not household recognizable names as of the ones of which went on further up here on this podium. Thank you again to the 1981 NCAA champions.